Hello everyone. Uh, so what we're going to do here is actually we're going to be using Desmos and we're actually going to go ahead and create the equation for a wave based on some of the variables we've actually looked at so far. You actually kind of know these, so I'm just going to go ahead and run through them uh, just to go ahead and give you an idea. We're going to actually um, be going over uh, several of them, So, but the main ones are going to be wavelength and period and amplitude. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, talk about them. So first we're going to have amplitude. That's going to be an equation to itself, and then after we're going to have, um, well, that's going to be a variable. Wavelength, they're going to represent by W. And then after we're going to have the period, which we're going to represent by T or for time. Okay, or that's actually how it is. So um, notice I'm using about the same variables except for W because they don't have lambda here. So not much you can do there. Anyway, so basically, if you want to think about it, how do we go ahead and start off a wave? How do we create a wave function? Well, everything is going to be based, as I said before, on the sine function. And you notice right there, you already have your sine function already. And you can notice that this is actually going to go ahead. And this is going to create all those crescent troughs. And you can see right here, you have the, um, basically you have the amplitude being right here, which is one, okay? And your wavelength here, which is two pi, okay? Which is how long it takes it um, is, well, basically your wavelength is 2 pi. That's how long it takes you for one crest, one trough. Right here, you have pi. Cool, right? So this is what you got so far. Now, how do we go ahead and create adjustments? Because not all waves are like this. Not all waves have just, you know, a crest and a trough that actually have an amplitude of one or their wavelengths may be longer. So how do we go ahead and adjust this? Well, first part is actually pretty easy. How do we adjust the amplitude? Well, we can go ahead and put in a variable of a. Okay, and I'm going to add slider a. And you can see we can actually do this. Now, I can make the amplitude much bigger or much uh, longer than I want. Notice I can even reverse the amplitude. The only thing I can't do is make the amplitude zero because then after I just have a straight line, you know, as I don't have that up or down function anymore. And that's because you're multiplying everything times this number. So think about it. You're multiplying that one times right now 3.3. .3. So that's the highest point that you can go or the lowest point that you can go. Remember that sine at pi is always going to equal to one. Okay, so uh, that's how you get that. Okay. Wavelength, though, is going to be a little trickier. Okay, um, so how do we go ahead and adjust the wavelength? Well, it's actually kind of simple, but it does require some mathematical thinking. One thing that I can do um, is actually kind of think about how do we go ahead and actually make it subjective, the length subjective to the wavelength. So first thing I can do is I can go ahead and I have to keep in mind that the current wavelength is 2 pi. So let's go ahead and put in 2 pi here. I'm going to just put in 2 pi. And you notice here, I've actually made an adjustment. And it actually works. Because you notice now, my wavelength is 1. OK, so that's all that there is. Um, basically, we're taking advantage of the sine function. And because now uh, er, that sine function is dependent on 2 pi, we multiply times 2 pi to make it all 1. But we can now go even further than that. Let's say that we want to actually make adjustments to the wavelength. Well. If you remember from fractions, uh, one thing that you can do is actually uh, go ahead and make things divisions of each other. So we can actually um, make x a division of the wavelength or partition of the wavelength. And then after, when you hit the wavelength, you will have that function of 1. And that will go ahead and create that entire wavelength again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide everything by a wavelength divided by a w, at slider w. So let's say that I wanted my wavelength to be, well, let's say I wanted my wavelength to be 1, right? Notice I can go ahead and trace this out. So you notice now my wavelength is 1, but I can expand that to 2. Actually, I'm sorry, wait, 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 wait. Expand that to 2, I'm sorry. 
And notice now my wavelength is 2, right? And that's because we made this into a fraction. Um, basically, what happened is that you have this fraction now where you go ahead and have this as a dependent on the total wavelength. So once you hit wavelength here and W is over W, you're going to have that function of 1 for the sine. And then after, you know, that allows you to create one wavelength because the two pi is here and you're taking advantage of that. So it's a fractional um, thing. Okay, so I really want you to think about that as you travel through x, okay? I want you to go ahead and just start by playing around with this function on your own, and then after we're going to talk about making a wave move with this function, which is actually pretty cool, and we'll actually be able to see the wave move with time. All right, go ahead and get started with this, uh, and I will go ahead and keep going.